Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary on Nantucket. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I work at Myrick O'Connell, which is a 70-person law firm. We're actually the biggest firm I found, I found out outside of Boston. Uh, because there are so many of us, everybody gets to do what they like doing. I like doing elder law, and so that's all I do. This show is not about elder law. It's really about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen uh, my presentations at the Salt Marsh, you know that I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And the goal of their life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you live on Nantucket, that means there are people and programs that you ought to know about that help you um, live here. And you need to know about people who are active and the things that they're doing. And you need to know uh, all of these things, which I don't know because I only, I only visit here. Uh, the person who does know is my friend Allison Forsgren, which is why she agreed to be my wonderful co-host for this show. And she continues to bring wonderful guests to talk about a lot of different things. And today you've got a wonderful person. A wonderful person, And yes. who's that? Well, my friend Peggy Kaufman. Um, I've known her for many, many years. Many years. Um, always active in what's going on on Nantucket. And she is this year, or she's 2018's Senior Correct. of the Year. Um, last year she was nominated and won the role for um, the female senior of the year. Her cohort is Alan Reinhardt, who is not with us today, but he's our senior male of the year. And we would love to hear your thoughts on the programs and what you do as a senior. And, and, uh, but first can I ask, because once again I'm an outlander, so how did you get here? Right, because oh. everybody's got a story. So, how, yeah, how, like, how did you get it? Were you born here? No, you know, I, I'm everybody's a native New Yorker. A native New Yorker. Born and bred New Yorker. Because you seem to blend in well here. Mm -hmm. It seems like you've adapted. Well, well, we've been coming here, I've been coming here since 1945. Well, that's My a long husband time. started coming here in 1939. And well, we didn't even know longer. each other at that time. And now is he a New Yorker also? Yes, he's a New Yorker also. He was in broadcasting. He must have been from a different part of New York, so you didn't you bump into him. That's absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> we knew each other as children, but we didn't know each other from up here. That we knew each other later on as we grew up. But you knew each other as kids? Yeah. That's in great. high school. That's believe great. it or not. And, and so um, did you meet here? No. Okay. We met in New York. And it turns out See, it out is a small that, town. Yeah. They always yeah, say it's it a, small, a small, you know, small town. Yeah. His family had a house here. Mm -hmm. And my family had a house up where Sea Cliff Inn was, which mm -hmm. is now where the Horchow House mm -hmm. is. So we'd both been coming here for years and years. We got married. And Wink said to me, well, Let's go visit the family in Nantucket. They were all New Yorkers, too. Yeah. So we started coming up. I see. I see. And we came weekends, came for vacations. And my brother-in-law, Jerry Bissinger, would always say, uh-oh, there goes the weather, because it would <laughs> rain the entire week that we were here. <laughs> and we came for Thanksgiving. And oh, you really liked it. Yeah, here. we really yeah. liked it. Because I bet there weren't many people then coming for Thanksgiving. There right? weren't. Right. And we would come to a small town in a small plane with yep. a turkey on my lap <laughs> that was cooked and smelled wonderful. And we mm. made it practically all the time. Sometime it was a day late, depending yep. on what the weather was. Yep. Yep. And I was working at that time at Lord & Taylor. Yep. My husband was in broadcasting with CBS. Yep. And we thought to ourselves, well, we'd like a house in the country. Well, a house in the country in Westchester did not appeal to I was me. just going to say, does that mean Westchester <laughs> if you were from New York at that time? No. So one weekend we were up here, and I had been talking about a house, a house, a house. I was like Scarlett O'Hara, land, I want land. I want land. And our niece, Annie Bissinger, now Annie Bissinger Poor, said, for God's sake, Peggy, why don't you buy a house and stop talking about it? So Winky and I went out, we found a house, and we would eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with the family. Yeah. So this was a conversation at breakfast. And at lunch, Annie said, well, what did you do today? And I said, we bought a house. That's and great. that's how we started coming much more often. That's great. Then we both retired. 
Now, how long ago was that? 25 years. Wow. And at that time, we had a house out on Kelly Road, which was our summer house, mm -hmm. and a house in town on York Street, which was the winter house, because you know how Nantucketers went from summer to winter houses. Right. And, and you uh, don't want to be out of sight of the center in the wintertime. No, you know, it no, just, no, it just no. The game just ends out there. It it's was like, just. It's like the hinterlands, right? But, lo and behold, we went to look for a house, and I found a house I loved on Cliff Road. Mm -hmm. At that time, Cliff Road was the country, particularly where we are, because we're up by Tuppence Links. Oh. And we bought the house now. We had never lived in a house. So the first thing my husband wanted to know was where was the superintendent? He wanted to put a <laughs> light bulb in or something like that. And so, the next that sounds like my skill set. I, ne I never that got is. that skill set. I've never been in an apartment, but I never developed the house skill set. You know? No, neither is so he. So did, did he ever? No, not in 25 years. Maybe <laughs> in the 26. <laughs> but um, we moved. Yeah. And because I worked my whole life, I decided, I knew a lot of people up here. Let's digress for one moment. At Lord & Taylor, we did something called Focus America every year. Mm -hmm. And we focused on a different part of America. So needless to say, since marketing was my area, I said, why don't we focus on Nantucket for the first year? So we traveled up here with the whole display department, advertising department, um, the buyers got everybody together From and Lord did and a month long promotion in at that time like 36 Lord and Taylor stores. Yeah. And that was when we really felt that we were putting our roots down in this community. When was that? What year was that? 1975. Wow. Um, the promotion was fabulous. It was very successful. And years later, when we'd moved here, Raffaello Sona said to me, we want to open a museum here, and we'd like to have a gift shop. And I said, mm-hmm. And he said, would you just come and talk to the start of the board? We'd like to own a museum. We'd like to have a, have museum, a museum here. here. So I went, and that was the beginning of the Lightship Basket Museum. And my talking to them about a shop then turned into my doing a shop. Mm -hmm. Now, the only difference between what I was doing then and what I was doing up here mm -hmm. is I didn't get paid for it any longer. So that was the start of getting involved in the community. And I have a feeling there were a lot of stories like that here in Nantucket. Oh, you there are folks loads, with tremendous loads. skills from all kinds of backgrounds, right? Yes. And they really love it here. Yeah. And so you really want to you really want to contribute your skills, you know. Oh, so oh. it started with the Lightship Basket Museum. And after the Lightship Basket Museum, I did a lot with the Nantucket Historic Association. Mm -hmm. Then I started thinking to myself I'm getting older. Excuse me, just a trivia question. Now, so the Nantucket Historical Association, is that the same as the Whaling Museum? Oh, and no. the NHA. I was just going yes. to say, no, I'm okay. Yes. Just yeah. making sure I'm See, not. See, you could be a Nantucket. See, I'm starting to pick this up. Yeah. I'm starting to get it. And I, uh, I keep explain, trying to explain to my partners that when I come here, I'm really working. See, it, it, I have to pretend that I'm working on Well, you are working. Yes. Well, you know. In, in the wintertime, it's easier to convince them. When I come down in August, it's really hard. Oh, that's, that's a tough putt. And you come down longer in yeah, August, yeah, I right. presume. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so the light, so it was, it was the, now it's the museum. Now so, it's, yeah. we went, um, we were up and running at oh. the Lightship Basket Museum. And I'm thinking to myself, I need a place, I'm getting older, I need a place to exercise, I need a place to teach me I couldn't work a computer. Computers were just getting started. Um, I needed a place where, at that time, I did a lot of knitting and that kind of thing. Maybe we could I'll see if there's a knitting group there. And off I went to the Salt Marsh Center. Now, you know the Salt Marsh Center is a building. The land underneath it is owned by the town. And as these kind of organizations are, 
it was a very different thing for me because I'd never been involved with any kind of town government or an organization that was not just run by a board that answered to itself. So my horizons started to broaden and I picked up a whole new group of friends and people. And at this point, um, I exercise there three days a week and we have a walking group out at the Boys and Girls Club two days a week, which my husband even does with us. And I spend a tremendous amount of time there. I'm on the board there. I'm also um, on the board, well, I'm on the advisory board for NCMC, the Music uh, Nantucket Community Music School. And what's that? Or Center. Center. Yes. Center. Um, they teach students, whether they're children, adults, to play instruments about music, the history of music. Uh, it's a fast, they entertain, and it's fascinating, and it's growing. I'm also <laughs> on the council of the theater workshop. What's the theater work? No, once again, I, yeah. everybody is watching mm -hmm. knows this stuff, but I'm just yeah. The theater, theater works is uh, the primary theater in Nantucket. Mm -hmm. It is uh, the oldest working theater. It produces current plays and plays, I would say, oh, back through maybe 20 years, 30 years. It's a theater that does productions that are both union and non-union, or I guess that's called, is that equity? Oh, equity. yeah, I think so, equity. Yeah. Actor, act, actors, actors' equity, equity. Yeah. and non-equity. The children in the school system try out for the shows. It's musicals, it's uh, drama. They do readings, experimental Armchair theater. theater, they do. Yep, yeah. yep. And that gets you involved, of course, with the Athenaeum, because reading and, and theater and shows. So oh, because stuff gets does stuff get produced? Does stuff happen there at yes. the Athenaeum? At the Athenaeum, or the theater is done at Bennett Hall. And one day, when we get you yeah. to stay for an overnight, you'll <laughs> come to Hall. theater. I haven't been to Bennett Hall. Well, you've been to the Congregational I, Church. The, uh, yes. So Bennett Hall is the is theater. Right. Oh, the theater I see. That. I see, I see, I see, I see. So, so, to, so can I ask a, a yes, question? So, sure. in all of those groups, yes, are are you unusual in being a retired person who was on those groups, or, or are most of the folks who are in, you know heavily involved folks who are also retired here? It's so just interesting wanted, because, one, as you said, the population is evolving in, in terms of being an older population. Right? The Salt Marsh Center. Yeah. I would say that our board is from 60 to maybe 85. Yeah. Uh, theater Workshop is, I would say, from their 50s mm -hmm. to 80s, yeah. late 80s. This was just wonderful. This is just wonderful. Thank you. I can Thank see you. why you ended up being the senior of the year. This is, this is really, that's really exciting. And, and, and we're going to talk some more now specifically about your responsibilities at NCEA, but that right after this non-commercial. Hello, my name is Allison Forsgren, and I am the chair of Nantucket's Council on Aging. And this year, like we have done for the last 30 years, we are looking for nominations for Senior of the Year. Um, we do Senior of the Year for men and Senior of the Year for women. This award recognizes the achievements and skills of our seniors who go above and beyond to give back to the community. To be considered, they must be 60 years of age or older, um, exemplify the spirit of positive aging, enthusiastically involved in the community, representative of all the outstanding seniors in our town, be a role model to his or her peers, be cheerfully willing to help others, and not be a paid employee of the Senior Center, the Council on Aging, or Elder Services. You're going to be asked to ask what the achievement and your reason for nominating this senior is, 
um, and in your own words, explain what makes the individual deserving of this special recognition. So you have until April 29th at 1 p.m. to deliver to the Salt Marsh this form or email a form that will be available. And we look forward to as many nominations as possible. Welcome back. Um, and Allison, where were we? We were talking with Peggy Kaufman, um, and now we are going to talk a little bit about the Nantucket Center for Elder Affairs, often called the NCEA. Um, Peggy is on the board there, among many other boards, and the NCEA actually is the friend of the Nantucket Council on Aging. So Peggy was explaining earlier about how the town of Nantucket owns the land, and the NCEA owns the building and also, you know, supports seniors on Nantucket. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you do with the NCEA and other things that they do to support the seniors here. And, and as a curiosity, how big is that? You know, how many people are there about on the, on the board? I mean, just that's oh, sense of 22. Power. A lot, a lot. And we also have a, a corporate board, which helps us a lot also. With a about 30 people I on see. it. I see. And the board ranges from the ages of 55 up. Mm -hmm. And of course, because the senior population is the fastest growing population here, we have grown to a point now where we're outgrowing our building. So that's going to be a whole second phase of life for all of us. And, and, so you, and you've been going to that building for a long time. I think you were, I you, certainly, you, you were I mentioning certainly earlier. Have. So can, can you, once again, as an, as an outlander, I've only been going, see, I'm new. I've only been going for six, seven years, right? It's starting to add up already, mm -hmm. I noticed. But so how, is, how, how, how has it changed oh, since, since you started being involved at the, at the Salt Marsh? At the Salt Marsh Center? In terms of the, you know, the... It, are there are a lot more people that use it now. Are there, have the programs really changed? How, how, how has it changed? All of the above. Um, first of all, because it's a revolving population, in the summer, there's a tremendous group that plays bridge, that plays other card games. The exercise classes are five days a week with three exercise classes and sometimes more a day. That takes in exercise, yoga, kettlebells, um, weight lifting, and anything that's got to do with keeping moving. Which, and is that pretty much every day? Is that, is that happen often? Every yeah. day, every day. Oh. Five days a week, not open on Saturdays and Sundays. And of course, there's bus service to get them there, pick up and delivery, or uh, as I am, still able to drive yeah. or bicycle or walk. Um, we all have ways to get there. They run a lunch program every single solitary day. We uh, do events that have to do with, well, coming up, uh, we're doing reminiscences. Mm -hmm. There's a man in Nantucket who has a basement filled with records and special recordings from the 50s and 60s. And everything from signs that used to be on diners to uh, phonograph al albums and covers and... Um, that sounds fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do a couple of things along the lines with that. We're also beginning to get very involved with uh, how do you help the older population that is not active, that people are coming with caregivers, and mm -hmm. how do you work that out, and what are they going to like? Of course, none of us are getting any older, <laughs> you can right. imagine. So that must be a real challenge, though, because that, that de dealing with a population of folks who have typically, and, and there are many of the people I would imagine that haven't traditionally used the salt marsh. The salt marsh, that it, is correct. For physical issues, or just because they were kind of, especially if, if people had memory issues or whatever, they may be kind of embarrassed about going, oh, geez, I don't want to bump into somebody I know. We're starting you know. something called uh, like memory cafes, which I think are all over the country. 
and we're yeah. just walking into that. You're just starting working we're on just that. Just starting to work on that. We do a bazaar at Christmas. We do Mother's Day and Father's Day. Uh, lunches or dinners. Men's breakfast. Men's breakfast, right. And then that dinner program that's relatively new where restaurants come in. And each take um, a meal. Oh, when's, I hadn't they heard work, that. Oh, it's like once a month. Mm -hmm. A restaurant will come in, do the meal, we fill the hall. And is that at what time right of day? Right at the Salt Marsh, dinner. That's for That's dinner. dinner. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and, the, and brownies and Cub Scouts are the servers. Isn't that how it would Yes, be? that is exactly. I, of course, I'm not you've old enough there, to go. Well, But I, you visit. Yes. You visit. Yes. <laughs> of course, she's not old enough to go. I'm <laughs> getting right. close. Right? And there's also something wonderful about all the organizations on Nantucket. You start out all on an even plane. It doesn't matter whether you were flipping burgers somewhere or the CEO of a large corporation. You get to Nantucket, you start to make friends, they become your friends, and it never comes up. What did you do? <laughs> How did you do it? It's just, okay. Like with the Lightship Basket Museum, we do a yep. huge sale in November. Well, for something like that, you need people who drive trucks, you need people to run the departments, you need people right. to collect the merchandise, and you become a family. Well, it's the same thing with the Salt Marsh Center. Suddenly, you're in a group of women or men, or right now we have all our programs are co-ed, um, and they start to be your friends. And as time goes on, you find out what they did before, what they're good at, and what they can do. And it really is a community that works together. And I think the Salt Marsh Center is one of the things that really keeps our generation here and keeps us working and active and involved and loving what we're doing. It's funny though when she mentions that the, the, the this notion of you kind of left your I don't want to say you left your past behind, but it yes. doesn't make any difference what you do. Because I always, when, when, up when I'm doing presentations, I'll, I'll say, you know, you, you get to be our age, and see, and I'm, so I'm, I'm 69, so I, I, I count. Very young I, I count. Well, I tell people, that's why I like doing elder law. All my clients think I'm young. I love that part. Mm -hmm. but, but I'll tell people, you know, so I, you get to a point where fame and fortune, not an issue anymore. You know, you want to have some friends, you want to get a good, you want to sleep well at night, you know. And, and so the camaraderie that comes from that, right. that, you know, the last thing you need to be doing is trying to impress the next person because they just don't care. You know, at this, you know, you get to, they don't care, right? And so it just, it just makes for more comfortable conversations. You You're know? absolutely right. And, and, and to see, and, and from everybody's perspective, therefore, to be having, I want to say, just to be able to live a new life, you know? Whether you came from Marlboro, Massachusetts, or from Westchester, or from L.A., you know, you're just kind of here trying to figure this stuff out. And it also brings a melting pot of people into your community, which is very important, and particularly today. And the population in Nantucket is changing. And now you, it, it, I know you've talked about the fact this is a busy place, right? This is obviously, the Salmash is a busy place. Yes. How do you see it changing? How do you see it changing? Well, because we've got to grow. That's the first thing. So you're going to add on upstairs? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it a really tall building. You're not going to grow much to the sides. No, that, we don't but, have any right. room to the side. No. And because of height regulations, we're not going up. So we're actively looking for larger quarters. And that also is an interesting uh, project because I don't know how many people have been involved with community centers or like our smaller Saltmarsh Center. And I'm one who, as Allison knows, I'm outspoken. <laughs> but you I seem get like such something. a wallflower. Yeah. <laughs> that really, that's true? That's I true? get into something yeah. and I want to see it working yeah. right away. Yeah. Well, town government doesn't work that fast. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and government in general doesn't. So it's a whole learning process for me. 
and you asked about the Senior Citizen of the Year, it came as a total shock to me. And I love it. I've loved this whole past year, has been wonderful. I've made loads of new friends in all different segments of the population. And as a group, um, the Senior Citizens of the Year, like the Saltmar Center, is something that's growing and evolving. And Allison and I and other people have talked about this because it shouldn't be an award that is just for what you've done in the past. It can definitely be something of what can we all do together in the future. So it's really a, a way of, of getting, of honoring people, but also of really kind of motivating people to kind and of- And also involving exactly. them in the community more. We're exactly. really looking for ways that the seniors can be more involved and, and get out more to other groups and explain and share what being a senior on Nantucket is all it, about. It's like being an ambassador. That's a good, yeah, yeah. That's a good way of describing it, right? And it hits all uh, parts of Nantucket. It doesn't matter whether it's, it could be being involved with the restaurant business, the hotel business, everything that we normally get involved with. It can be involved with people coming in just for the summer on yachts. You know, there's a huge population in the summer that we don't really touch. So the numbers at the seniors don't go up to a significant extent during the summertime? it goes up tremendously yeah. in the summertime. And that's where a lot of our expansion will come from. Because the, win the winter group now is much larger in my age group than it was when we moved here 25 years ago. So we are definitely looking for more to do. And as we partner with Allison and everybody else, we can really make inroads there. And I suppose just trying to deal with that, it is such a huge influx, but trying to figure yeah. out how to get them and how to get folks involved so that it just makes their summers more fun, well, right? And we Absolutely. actually had an elder needs assessment done a couple of years ago that identified a lot of ways that Nantucket is behind the curve when it comes to programs being offered and more importantly, ways that we could improve upon what we do for our seniors here. So that's an exciting piece of evidence. Of the pie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just, it just says, it explains what we need to do to keep our seniors happy and safe. So um, we're working on that um, as well. And one of the ways that we can work on that, of course, is make our days longer. You know, the salt marsh closes at like 4.30. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about what do we all do in the evenings. There's no reason we can't eventually be open on weekends. And I suppose the, even the dinners that you were, the dinners that you exactly. were just talking I know that in my local senior center, we have a wonderful um, senior center director who had been uh, previously, she had, was the president of the city, the, well, the city council for many years. So she's a real actor. Right. So she's actually gotten um, one day beer and wine licenses for the senior center for the for the weekends right because they're just having you know because they're just having early 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 evening right. doing some shows right but once again it's dealing with as as, a, as you've seen that senior population it's much more active folks are just active and want to get together but I'll tell you you're a great salesman for all of this mm -hmm. this has just been thank you this has just been a treat Th thank you I thought you'd like Peggy Peggy, thank you so much for coming. Allison, thank you so much for doing this again, You're right? Welcome. So you ought to stop at the Senior Center if you haven't. You ought to check the programs, right? You ought to think about, if you know somebody anywhere near as good as Peggy, to be Senior of the Year. So thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you very much, Peggy. Thank you, Allison. And we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Nant on Nantucket. Thank you very much.